Leading a lot. Uh, he's actually got the, uh, the league's most minutes with 2,480. We'll see him uh, hopefully earn his 60 minutes tonight. So action is underway. The Wolves start with the line of Odell. You know, with a nice pass back to Trecapelli. He'll get the shot. That's blocked in front. Rebound. They score. Marcus Foligno opens up the scoring. It's 1-0 Sudbury. This line has been producing for the last couple of games. We've seen Kane Alacock last night, a perfect example. Marcus Foligno out there tonight, putting another point on the board, drawing first blood for the Sudbury Wolves. You want to start, and Mike Foligno wanted a better start from his hockey club, and he gets it tonight. We Good. see the shot from the point, the rebound, and Marcus just happens to be there, finds the open side and managed to put that one in. For Foligno, that's his eighth goal of the season. And as a man to mention, that line again. Now we're going to have a scrap. Sefton has uh, dropped the gloves with number seven of the Brampton Battalion. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a seven on my list. That's Zach Bell of the Brampton Battalion. And uh, I'm not going to lie to you, Stu. I saw those two guys chatting in the warm-up. So I don't know if this is a predetermined bout or not. <laughs> well, two rookies going at it. How often do you see this? Oh, there's Bell. He's pretty excited. Sefton making his Brampton zone. The battalion play it off the boards. Good job there by Alacock. Feeds McFarland. McFarland into Foligno. Oh, my goodness. What a pretty goal. 2 nothing, Sudbury. That was a great goal. This line seems to be working. We just talked about the, the pairing of McFarland with these two guys. Uh, McFarland's good sense, hockey sense, makes this so much easier for guys like Foligno and Alacock to find the net. Here it is. McFarland brings it right up and over to Marcus Foligno, who just has nothing but empty net to put it in. That is a pretty goal. One of the prettiest we've seen in a line combination. A couple of nifty moves to get into the zone. Now goes after it along the end boards. Brings it out in front. Clears it in front. Goes up a couple of bodies. Alacock scores! His third goal in two games. And it's 3 nothing Sunday. Those guys wanted three goals, they got three goals. Kane Alibok, what a great player he has turned out to be in the last couple of games. Really showing some great offensive talent. Uh, not just a body, a big body to hit guys with. This play starts with McFarland dancing around some of the defensemen. He gets tangled up by Albert and Kinsella. Gets the puck, centers it. Marcus can't get to it. Alicock takes a swipe at it and it goes in. That's all that matters. Another Another goal goes up on the board for the Sudbury's. Great puck control by John McFarlane. Alicock, his ninth goal of the season. There's a goal by the battalion. The shutout is over, and it's a 3-1 hockey game. Real quick wrist shot. Looks like that one just squeaks past Valaket. Not sure if he wasn't able to see it or not. We'll have to wait until we see, we see it on the replay. So Brampton doesn't take long to rebound after the Wolves made it 3-0. That was a shot by Albert. Just brings that one right past Alev Alaket. 23 seconds after Alacock was McLeod. Now it's back to the point. Waters looks for some help. There's Perov taking a pass. Gets around one man. Leaves the puck. They score. It's a one goal hockey game. 3-2 Sudbury. Well, whatever Stan Butler was saying to his men in the dressing room during that uh, intermission has clearly made some kind of impact. Also, I think we're seeing a Sudbury Wolves team that's not playing with the same fire we saw them playing the first two periods with. If they want the two points, they're going to have to fight for it. You see right here, this one goes, looks like it kind of sneaks in five hole on him there. Pair off with the great shot that uh, makes this game potentially winnable for the Brampton Battalion now. Well, again, we uh, were worried about City. And now we're going to have a penalty. As we would assume, it's against the battalion. They had possession. And I think we're going to have a couple of penalties. John McFarlane also makes his way to the penalty box. He seemed quite angry about the hit that happened on him. I'm sure uh, the second, uh, the, sh the first shift right after a big hit like that, you're looking to uh, attack somebody as well. So both uh, both him and Alberga are in the box, two minutes apiece. Well, McFarland doing quite a bit of talking down in the penalty box. Schedule in the month of January. Right they have now. been succeeding quite well, and we do have an extra second has been added to the clock. 
So seems like uh, whatever Stan Butler had to say to the referees, they understood what uh, what he wanted. Oh, Stan got that extra second, and from the drop of the puck, Waters is going to get a shot, but it's not going to make it to the net. And so <laughs> the game comes to an end. The confetti flies here at the uh, Sudbury <laughs> Arena, and it's now official. The Wolves win the final score, three to two. Great. Great first two periods by the Sudbury Wolves. A little bit of trouble there in that third period, unfortunately. And it and it showed. It really cost them those two goals. Well, I think Mike Foligno, I think he's overall he's going to be happy with the team's effort, but I don't think uh, he's going to be totally happy with a couple of the breakdowns they had in that third period that led to those two goals. And no, definitely. Uh, definitely some, uh, some things to work on and discuss as they head to Mississauga. You don't want to be making those mistakes against the majors. They're ranked third in the east right now and sit uh, 20 odd points above the Sudbury Wolves in the standing for their division so really important that they